It's a hundred years since Prince Borghese and four other drivers raced 8,000 miles from China to France, and we are with 130 antique cars trying to do it again. Their owners have paid 35,000 pounds each to enter, and the race stops every night like the Tour de France. We're following five video diarists. There are the Itala boys, their car's a load of trouble, but Adam and Jonathan would sooner laugh than cry. The Geordie lads, Joe is a television chef and Bob has a pub. He bought the pub after being banned from it. There are the Aussies, Andrew invited his dad to drive him to Paris and here they are. There are the two fast ladies, Pamela likes the accelerator, Nicola prefers the brake. And there's baby driver, Petite Michelle from Manhattan. She's with Dan from the Midwest. Michelle's the driver and that's the way she likes it. And I'm Jack Pitsy and I'm on the race trying to understand what's going on. They are climbing. In the Red Lagonda down there are the Geordie lads, Bob and Joe. At the start, Joe reckoned they have a long way to go. I think it's 13,800 kilometers. I think it's the correct uh, distance. Oh my God, look at that. Bob's decided that he loves Chinese women. I want to marry a Chinese girl. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I do about marrying one, but I definitely want to get the name a little bit better. That's for sure. Well, we're leaving China to after tomorrow, so you haven't got very long. I'm afraid. Mm, well, we'll move on to Mongolia next. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be something interesting going on around here. It's so fickle. We're not competing yet. The Chinese won't allow it. So racing won't begin till we get into Mongolia, probably tomorrow. Right now, everyone is just getting used to the local terrain. Jonathan, in the red scarf and driving a red Itala, is borrowing a battery from one of the backup cars. But how do you fit it? Yeah, which way around does the battery go? Well, the you red is the positive, right, so and the black is the negative. Right, well, come on, get on there. Right, so you've got to try and get this battery in there while I film you. <laughs> OK? I think you can do that on your own. Come on. Oh, can I, Chef? Off, 
The day ends at a place called Sizi Wangi. We're sleeping in yurts tonight. There are two grades of yurt, canvas ones and the super deluxe version, which Michelle has. I'd just like to introduce you to our domicile for the evening. Here it is. Nice window outside, a room with a view. Uh, ours and everyone else who can see in our room. Let's take a walk inside. Okay, in we go. Here it is, two beds. The smell is uh, somewhere between dank and damp. Oh, let's check out the sheets. Okay, there's no, uh, <laughs> it's a bit afraid at the ends. Let's see, okay, uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, the sheets don't tuck in. There's no, uh, oh dear. Okay, there's no top sheet. I have a feeling this thing hasn't been cleaned in quite a while. The pillow is, uh, well, it feels like there's uh, beads in there of some sort. Um, I have a feeling that I'm going to head back to the car now to retrieve my sleeping bag. But I will tell you, the view is quite lovely. For the Geordie lads, things are looking up. But the Yatala boys are still on their way here. Here we are driving in Mongolia at night using the lights from the car behind us to shine with our batteries flat. It's day two. We've had a little problem with the alternator charging the battery. It's about 9.30 at night. All you can see is the stars and a fucking great big truck coming. Anything to say, John? Other than it's probably about a hundred years since anybody did this without any bloody light. Coming into camp in about 15, 10 minutes and looking forward to a nice hot cup of tea and getting warm because it's mighty cold. Michelle is snug in her yurt by now and the Atala boys have finally arrived. They've had a bit of friction. I lost my temper. I was rude, nasty, snide and cross. Yes. <laughs> Cool. Okay. But we were there on time. And that is because we were there on time. And that's because I left at the right time. Cool. I was ready at the right time. So, to answer you really question... You see, Joanna talk? would love it, because she knows that I don't like to leave very, very early, and that I, I usually get there on time, so... What's the big deal? So, I answer to your question, 8 o'clock? What? What was the question? You can't remember. <laughs> we know what time we're leaving. We're leaving at 9.01. The question for you is what time do you want to get up? Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Hmm. It's now what, one o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. We've got to eat Half breakfast, we've got oh. to pack our bags, and we've got to put the battery back in the car. Oh, I forgot about it. 7.30. 7.30. Done. 7.30 it is. Right, cool. Next morning, the early birds are coming to their cars, and nearby, Michelle is taking it all in. Really looking forward to Mongolia. Really looking forward to Mongolia. It's um, especially if this is just a taste. I uh, I can't wait to get out of the wilderness. Really, this is why we do this. Why we leave the comforts comforts of home. Why we leave our high thread count sheets. Uh, it's all worth it. It's all worth it to be able to visit places like this. Well, it's 7:30. We agreed we're getting up at 7:30. Uh, what, shall we just talk quickly about um, the argument we had yesterday, or not? Which one we had about four? I very nearly punched you, and I haven't done that for a long time. But I've hardly ever punched you. You punched me quite a few times. I have not. But I well, very nearly... punched you, or I, ever, I really ever. lost my temper yesterday. You did, you were very stroppy. And I moved you from the passenger seat to the driver's seat. Um, 
How are you? In no it? uncertain terms. Well, hopefully, you know, we're just getting ourselves what? back into the groove and uh, working <sighs> out, remembering each other's foibles. And um, I think a lot of endurance rallying is about the difficulty of getting on together, sitting very close side by side for weeks on end. And Five bloody weeks. And still actually popping out at the end as friends. Good morning, this is Andrew from Car 115, the FC Holden. And this is Mick from Car 115, the FC Holden. And uh, one thing we do both agree on is it's bloody cold this morning. We spent last night in Sisi Wangkui, out of Mongolia, in one of the uh, local accommodation, equivalent to a caravan. Out here it's called a yurt or a gur. It's fairly modern. Uh, even I can stand up in the centre of it when I do hit my head. We've got a table and other modern conveniences like a 1950s sideboard painted communist red. But not to worry, the lattice work to keep the walls up. Underneath the carpet on the floor is just uh, wooden brick and as you can see we've got the luxury one. We've got one light bulb so at least we did well. Moving outside, we'll show you uh, what the accommodation in this caravan park is like. More yurts. Ornate artwork on the doors. They're all the same, so you can uh, find out which yurt's yours and walk into somebody else's. And coming out, the sun is rising over the plains. And these yurts are everywhere, like mushrooms. Unbelievable. Here they are. That's a yurt. We're a girl. All right, get on with it then. Are you going to film me in the shower? If you want me to, I will. We'll be there. So that those viewers. Hello. <laughs> You'd like that, wouldn't you? I'd love that. Yeah. Hey, has the battery charged? Go and find out, really. Yeah. Okay. Please. It is brilliant sunshine, and behind me is the uh, washrooms. Um, a very interesting toilets, but at least they are clean. But they have automatic soap dispensers, an automatic hand dryer in the middle of nowhere. Hmm. <laughs> ah, physically fit, physically fit. I am physically fit, physically fit. <laughs> physically fit, physically fit. Physically fit. <laughs> Five weeks with that. Grassland. Yurt accommodation. Small little hamlet down there. Miles and miles of grassland. Nothing except a road beckoning to Paris. We're getting ready to hit that road in a minute. This is Tony Folks. He's a veteran of the backup team. How's he doing? Well, I'll tell you what, the, the, the people in the uh, terrain, these grasslands in Lower Mongolia, absolutely stunning. Beautiful place. And we stayed in these uh, yurk sort of tents yesterday. And so comfortable, you know. You know, it's camping, but, but you've sort of got a, a stone wall around you as well. It was really good. Thoroughly enjoying it. Yeah, a little bit of a hard night, you know. We were expecting, I think, a few breakdowns on the first few days. We're getting that. Um, the major service crews didn't come in until 12 o'clock last night, so it was quite a hard day for them. But basically, no. Um, wonderful atmosphere. People are enjoying it. And we've got the wonderful weather. Look at it. It's blue, blue. <laughs> So my nail varnish lasts a long time. Here, it isn't lasting a long time at all. It's chipping and it's disgusting, so I'm now taking it off. And this will be the first time that anyone's seen me without nail varnish for decades. Oh. Oh. 
Very good. How about a little charge? Come on, give me, baby. It's a lot of diamonds. It is, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, all right. Mm. <laughs> It's become the mantra of all the drivers now that even a bad day on the rally is better than a good day in the office. They're just saying what a fantastic thing it is to be driving in Mongolia on a Tuesday morning and how we would not rather be doing anything else. We'd rather be doing this. Yeah, we, we were saying it's uh, another busy day at the office. I mean, it's just fantastic to see this expanse of country with nothing in the way. There's no buildings, there's no people, there's not really any cars, there's a good road. And we're following alongside the old road, which has got sort of 100 metre markers the whole way. It's fascinating. And we think that must be the old road that Prince Borghese took when he did it in the same car 100 years ago. And this is tough for us. It must have been a nightmare for him. So what kind of man was this Prince Borghese who won the original race in 1907? Here he is sitting in his car while one of his assistants goes to carry water. Borghese was an Italian nobleman. He wasn't much liked by his fellow nobles. They called him the English officer because he was clean-shaven and he had a very cool manner. Apparently that was the English style. But I don't think he was an English good sport because when they all came into the Gobi, they had a, an agreement that they would all look after each other. But when it came to it, two of the cars ran into big trouble and were held up. And Borghese, rather than go back for them, ploughed on. And they would have died if they hadn't been picked up delirious with thirst and fever by passing camel trains. Borghese was away and gone, over the horizon and on his way to victory. This bit of China is noted for paleontology, for its fossilized monsters. The border town of Ehrenhot now, our stop for the night. I'm just recording our impressions of arriving in Ehrenhot, which is a border town. It looks a bit like Disneyland to me. Look, there's the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, and you're also driving. Yeah, but I can drive with one hand. Okay. See, I wanted to record this conversation. Orange man in rows. And you, are, you and I are having <laughs> two bicycles on right. Because I'm pulling out. Because I'm price. learning from you. <laughs> Motorcycle. You on say there. things like, "Oh, oh I'm only thinking on. of you. I'm only thinking of you." So I'm another. saying to you, "I'm only thinking of your." What's stomach. that car? I'm only thinking of your stomach. You haven't had lunch yet. That's true. So I'm trying to get you to the hotel. Oh, look, so there's the ambulance that we're so going to need we in a few minutes. Right? You just stay right there. We're going to need you so in a minute. So just calm down and enjoy the scenery. 
For Michelle and her navigator, Dan, it's an early night, the last night for some time in a hotel. And then there's the fact that we're leaving white sheets behind. Tomorrow's the first <laughs> camping day. And I'm not looking forward to it. I'm trying to see if I can make sleeping in the car work. <laughs> and I'm not sure if I can do it. But I think I'm going to attempt it tomorrow. Well, good luck. That's... You're going to be sitting up in there all night. You're going to be, have ridden it all day. That's okay. I feel like maybe I'll become one with the car. It's the end of day three. It's half past eleven. We're on the border of China and Mongolia. We have had a busy day. The back two wheel rims were both cracked. So then we had two or three different people advising us and basically should we get it welded here? We tried to weld it, bushing, bushing, not allowed. Went and told the police we were trying to use the welding machine, it didn't work. So Tony's now taken the uh, wheel rims off to be welded, and while all this was going on, uh, the wooden spokes in the wheels are all creaking because they're drying out. A hundred years ago, Prince Borghese, he's the one on the left, had trouble with his wooden wheels. But in those days, there were plenty of blacksmiths around. And what do you think of wooden wheels? They're, they're amazingly strong. Yeah. They are absolutely fantastic. I mean, there's many cars here with wooden wheels. Um, they're, they're, they're so strong, it's unbelievable. In fact, we've had steel wheels break, and the wooden ones still keep going. They're, they're very, very good. They're extremely good. But of course, it, it's the steel bit at the end that was cracking, not the wood. Um, we also had one occasion with a little bit of a minus point. One of the older cars actually um, seized a wheel bearing and it got so hot one night that it actually burnt the wood. The, the brake drum got red hot and of course that burnt the wood, which was uh, not so good. But they, we managed to cool it down with lots of water and that was okay as well, you know? But they're a good wheel. Tomorrow we're going to get our first taste of the notorious Gobi Desert. The official book of the Peking to Paris is out now, published by Veloci at $29.99. Check out PekingParis.com for further information.